we'll give something that has no eternal value all of our brain space, that we will let it wreck our day. We'll let somebody come into our day, the 86,000 seconds that we have in our day, and we let somebody come up in one minute and jack that bad boy up and will jack up the rest of our day. When I look at this songs, I see an individual, probably like a lot of us in this room today, that we're tired, that we're weary, life has disappointed us in some form of fashion. Maybe got some news this week that wasn't encouraging. Maybe something happened on the job that was disappointing. And at times, it calls us into life to just question God. And, and if we're honest, I think it is our human nature to quickly forget all the goodness and blessings that God has done in our lives. I know we can read through the Old Testament and we can read, look at the children of Israel and we can point at them and just kind of like, man, look at them. Man, God just delivered them out of Egypt. He just delivered them out of bondage. Look at them. What are they wanting for? They want to go back to Egypt and go back to bondage. But that's me. I'm one of those children. Because man, I can, when life is tough, I'm getting out to God. I'm praying, I'm fasting. Man, I'm pursuing God. But the minute that God answers that prayer, all right, God, you good, man, go on back in the closet. Hey, I'll come get you when I need you. And then when life gets tough again, we almost like, God, where are you at? But the same God that has been with us all the days of our life, the same God that has allowed us to get out of certain different circumstances, the same God that has been with us and helped us and protect us, He is still there in every essence of our life. And so what David is reminding us is, is this, is that, hey, don't forget what God has done in your life. Good morning, Doxology. It is really great to have you here this morning. The Freeland family is at Yellowstone National Park this morning, hoping to see some bears without being seen by bears. So wish us luck. I've been looking forward to this trip with my kids for a really long time, but have a special treat for you that I am so bummed to miss in person. If you've been around Doxology for long, you've met Chauncey Franks before. He's been a great friend of mine for more than a decade. With the exception of about 10 fall Saturdays and one really miserable TCU Oklahoma State baseball game where he refused to come to my rescue as the Frogs put together a late game comeback and I was under fire from unruly Frog fans. But other than that, he's been a really great friend. He's led Fellowship of Christian Athletes at TCU since 2010. He's married to his better nine-tenths, Dr. Danica Franks, and they've got three kids, Eli, Eden, and Ellie. He's going to help us introduce a new series in the Psalms this morning, and I am so glad he's here. Would you join me in giving a warm doxology welcome to my friend Chauncey Franks? <clears throat> Good morning. I have to correct Pastor Chris first of all, because there was a time period that Oklahoma State used to have their way with us, and Chris would send us little kind messages. Hey, hey, it wasn't your day today. Hey, I hate that happen to you guys today. So any times that we get a chance to beat Oklahoma State, uh, I'm going to let Chris know it. So good morning, Doxology. Good to see you this morning. How are you guys doing this morning? It is an honor to be with you this morning. Uh, Doxology has been a part of my ministry for the last 14 years. Uh, when we, myself and my wife, got here to TCU to lead Fellowship Christian Athletes, uh, Pastor Ken at that time, pastor here, uh, was a chaplain for the TCU football team, got a chance to walk beside him for two years before he passed the baton to me. Uh, my kids went to school here. Uh, they did the pre-K here, so which was great. Uh, uh, Miss Miller and her team did a fantastic job. All my 
my administrative assistants have come from this church. So what does that mean? That to keep up with me, because I do have no gift of organization, that God has given a special calling. And so every time I need one, uh, the last three have come to here. So our current one is, is Chandler Kerf. Uh, she's my administrative assistant with TCFCA, and she does a phenomenal job. Uh, we've had board members, Beth Patterson, to see her and Mike here. Uh, she's been a part of our team. She cooks the best brownies in Fort Worth. I hope she brought some today. Uh, love her, love her to death. Um, Matt Lewis, I think you guys probably know Matt Lewis. Matt Lewis is a part of what we do and a great friend and ally for, for FCA there at TCU as well. And then Pastor Chris, I mean, he's a great brother, man. I love him. We go to the same Barbara. Uh, we both are rocking that same bald head dude. Uh, I, I love him from that. You know, anytime me, him, and James Womack get together, man, we make the best Oreo bald head brother co coalition. So, man, I'm, I'm thankful for that as well. Uh, my wife is so excited about today that she's in Arizona uh, with, on a girl's trip. Uh, so I don't really know how I feel about that, but I'm just still processing that. And so we all pray for my heart. Uh, when she gets back tonight, uh, if I make a decision, go pick her up from the airport or not. Uh, my uh, three kids, Eli, Eden, and Elle, they were here at the, uh, the morning service. Uh, and you know how kids are. They come up to you after like, Dad, you spoke too long. Like, Dad, you sweating. Like, Dad, like, like, they ain't like got nothing good to say to me. I'm like, can you tell Dad I did a good job? Can you tell me I love you? Like, man, what is your problem? But, uh, but love them. But no, but doxology, you are family, uh, and I am thankful to be here with you this morning and thankful to get the opportunity to, uh, to fill in with Chris, uh, thankful to him and his family, uh, pray that they would have a great time, great vacation. Uh, love on your pastor. Uh, being a shepherd is a hard job. And so love on him, encourage him, speak to him, because I know he loves you and he's faithful to this community. Hey, if you have your Bible, smartphones, uh, will you please turn with me this morning to Psalms 103. Psalms 103, we will be looking at verses 1 through 5. <clears throat> Psalms 103, and I will be reading from the uh, King James Version. And it goes as following. Praise the Lord, my soul, all my innermost being. Praise his holy name. Praise the Lord, my soul, and forget not all of his benefits, who forgives all of your sins and heals all of your disease, who redeems your life from the pit and crown you with love and compassion, who satisfies your desires with good things so that your youth is renewed like the eagle. Let's pray. Well, Father, I am thankful this morning for the opportunity to impart your word to your people Father, I pray for your power, your strength to speak through me, that you would encourage my heart and as I may encourage their hearts as your word has encouraged me. Give me the strength now, Lord, to share your word, the truth of your word, the compassion of your word, the conviction of your word, to encourage and influence your people, to walk out in courage and more connected to the heart of Christ. Father, we love you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. In 2013 left SMU and came to the promised land of TCU to lead Fellowship Christian Athletes. At that particular time, uh, my son, Eli, was one and a half. And anytime I come on campus or at practice, uh, that little guy was with me. And so over the course of the years, Eli has grown up on TCU's campus. Uh, he's in the locker room consistently. He's, he knows players after players, his favorite players all throughout the years. And so TCU is home for him. There's times when I pull up to the campus, that joker will jump out the car and just take off, and I don't know where he's at. And the problem is when I'm ready to go, uh, I can't find that little guy. But one of the things the other day, last couple weeks ago, there was a camp going on, and he had his, one of his friends and their family with them, and he wanted to, to show them around. But the problem is, is that when we have camps going on, they pretty much have all the different, normally doors locked and people kind of, you know, policing different areas where they don't want the public to go, but they want to keep, you know, the crowd going down a certain lane. But Eli, being experienced and being in an environment, he got his friends and they began to, to walk around and he would come to one of those stations where they would stop you and he would, he would look to the person and says, hey, do you know who my father is? And they was like, well, who's your daddy? Chauncey Franks. And they let him walk on by. 
He goes to another little station and as he maneuvers through the facilities and they come to another stop, say, hey, we're not having anybody come this way. It's like, do you know who my father is? No, who's your daddy? Chauncey Franks. And so they let him go again. And so next thing you know, Eli made his way down to the Holy Drill, to the, to the, the football locker room, and he's showing his friends around and showing their families around. And he, you know, takes him up and takes him through the coach's office and all that. And I get a, a text from one of our assistant ADs. It says, man, your son got more better credentials than I do. <laughs> that he can, he has access to places that I can't even get into. And so Eli comes home that day, and I showed him the text. I said, Eli, I said, what do you, said, how did you get into those places? He says, I told him who my daddy was, and because I'm your son, I have benefits to get into those places. What King David is going to show us today, that because of who our father is, we have benefits because of our relationship with God. And so as we kick off the book of Psalms, and I have the honor of kicking this off, and I start to think about what I want to talk about, God landed me here on Psalms 103. A little bit of historical background of the book of Psalms. The book of Psalms has no single author. King David authored a large part of the 150 uh, books of Psalms. The book of Psalms is actually five books that make up this one book of song of praise. The book of Psalms, it, it allows us to connect with God as we face things in life. It allows you to see how God's people communicate to God during their life's ups and downs. As we're going through life, we can turn to the book of Psalms for hope, encouragement, praise, and worship. And reading God's Word back to Him, the book of Psalms gives us a practical view of how we can approach God in life situations. And that's the beauty of songs, that it, it, it makes it practical, that you can see God's people in their struggles, in their disappointments, in their hurt and pain, and you can see the rawness, the realness, the emotion side that they are expressing their heart and mind to God. And so here it is that I love that Psalms 103 has been called the Mount Everest of songs, exalting the soul to breathtaking heights. The great Charles Surgeon said, it is, the, it, it is the apple tree among the trees of the woods, and its golden fruit has flavor such as no fruit ever bears unless it has been ripened in the full sunshine of mercy. I have to be honest, I really don't know what that means, but it's Charles Surgeon, so I thought it was good. I put that bad boy in there. <laughs> so I'm going to interpret it for you. Psalms 103 is juicy. It's flavorful. It is bursting and has, once you bite into it, it can satisfy a hungry soul. This is a rich and full song. And so as David, and we all know the life of David, and, and I can look through and study it through. This is David probably penned Psalms 103 in the latter part of his life. And we are familiar with King David, the, the shepherd boy that was a giant killer. We know David, the heart we know David had a heart for, for the Lord. David was called a man after God's own heart because he was faithful to the Lord. He was repentant of when he did wrong. And he loved the Lord with all his heart. And we also know the side of David, of David affairs and murders. And we, we know the side of David, of David hiding in caves and fearing for his life. And so when I look at this Psalms, I see an individual, probably like a lot of us in this room today, that we're tired, that we're weary, Life has disappointed us in some form of fashion. Maybe got some news this week that wasn't encouraging. Maybe something happened on a job that was disappointing. And at times, it calls us into life to just question God. But one of the things that I love about David is, is this. We all talk to ourselves. Did anybody talk to themselves in the room? You know how you have a conversation with yourself, you just be having a good old conversation, you know what I mean? And, but David was the mastery of self-talk. And it shows us the importance of that when we, are, when we are communicating, when we are having that inner soul in our being, what we see right here, David is reminding himself of the goodness of God. David is reminding himself and challenging himself that, man, wow, he should praise God. David is reminding himself and encouraging himself. When the last time that you just sat still and encouraged yourself? 
When the last time you just sat still and reflect on the goodness of God? Because we know this, that we'll give something that has no eternal value all of our brain space. That we will let it wreck our day. We'll let somebody come into our day, the 86,000 seconds that we have in our day, and we let somebody come up in one minute and jack that bad boy up and would jack up the rest of our day. But the Spirit of God and what David is saying is like, no, we need to reflect on the goodness of God. And so verse number one in, in chapter 103, it says this. It says, praise the Lord, my soul, all my innermost being. Praise his holy name. Praise the Lord, my soul, and forget not all his benefits. As we read in verse one and two, we can see David reminding himself and encouraging himself to praise God. This, that he is encouraging his whole soul, his inner being, his mind, body, and strength to give God praises. Why? Because praises turn our focus back to an object. It puts our focus on something rather than our circumstances. Praises releases joy, hope, and helps us to connect our heart and mind to soul. Praises helps us to focus, focus, not to focus on our circumstances, but to focus on the one who controls our circumstances. So here it is. David is reminding himself. He said, David said, praise the Lord. He's encouraging himself. He is invoking. He is, he is praising because David begins to recognize. He recognized in his life, when he looks back over his life, the faithfulness and goodness of who God is. And so not only that David is just giving lip service, but it's every aspect of who David is, every aspect of his internal being, every aspect of his soul is that David says, hey, I want to praise the Lord. I want to give him everything that I have. I want to allow God, I want to, to rejoice of the goodness of who God is. And so David is saying, hey, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Oh, my soul, all that that is within me, David said, hey, I'm going to praise his name. Doxology Church, by namesake, you are a house of praise. In every aspect of who we are, when we think about the goodness of what God has done in our life, it should be an aspect of praise of how we live our lives. I grew up in this little community called St. John Colony. It's right outside of uh, Austin, Texas. Between Austin and Lockhart is one of the, the first black colonized area here in Texas. And the, the, the elders I can remember when I was growing up, they would often greet you and say, praise the Lord. And they would see you, you come to the house and praise the Lord. And I remember just asking one of the elders one time, like, why y'all say praise the Lord every time y'all see each other? He said, because it'll, it said, it's a constant reminder to take your focus off your current circumstances and celebrate the goodness of who God is. It's a constant reminder that even whatever I may be facing right now in life is temporarily because my hope is in a greater coming, that Jesus is coming, and that I have a greater purpose where I will live in eternity with them. And so I can always remember that as a kid. Praise the Lord. I'm like, all right, well, praise the Lord. But I even greatly appreciate it now to remind myself that when I am going through something, that the importance of praising God. And then David goes on to say in the latter part of uh, verse 2, it says, he says, forget not. And forget not, that phrase occurs over 200 times in, 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 in the Bible. And, I, and, and if we're honest, I think it is our human nature to quickly forget all the goodness and blessings that God has done in our lives. I know we can read through the Old Testament and we can read, look at the children of Israel. And we can point at them and just kind of like, man, look at them. Man, God just delivered them out of Egypt. He just delivered them out of bondage. Look at them. What are they wanting for? They want to go back to Egypt and go back to bondage. But that's me. I'm one of those children. Because, man, I can, when life is tough, I'm getting after God. I'm praying. I'm fasting. Man, I'm pursuing God. But the minute that God answers that prayer, all right, God, you good, man. Go on back in the closet. Hey, I'll come get you when I need you. And then when life gets tough again, we almost like, God, where are you at? But the same God that has been with us all the days of our life, the same God that has allowed us to get out of certain different circumstances, the same God that has been with us and helped us and protect us, he is still there in every essence of our life. And so what David is reminding us is, is this, is that, hey, don't forget what God has done in your life. Don't forget how God has delivered you. Don't forget how God is, 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 is taking your life personally, that he's mended your life, that he's saved your soul, that he's redeemed your marriage, that he's healed you physically, that he's healed you emotionally, that he's healed you mentally. Don't forget about what God has done and doing in your life. 
Because oftentimes we'll forget and we'll question like, God, where are you at? I'm like, no, nah, God is like, I've been here all the time. I'm the same God that was there yesterday, months ago, and I'm the same God that is present in your life now. And so David is reminding us that don't forget. I remember growing up, uh, my grand, both of my grandfathers were pastors, and my dad was a pastor growing up. And I can remember as a kid going to uh, my grandparents' church, and, and every Sunday, there was one of the deacons, you know, good old black church, you always got that good deacon. That just, man, every time you walk in that joint, he's smiling. The joy of the Lord is always over there, brother. And this was Deacon Willie. And one of the things that I love about Deacon Willie, my grandfather would ask him, Deacon Willie, how you doing today? He always had this phrase. He says, I'm thankful because God woke me up on the right, on, with my right mind this morning. And then he would go on to say, he woke me up with breath in my lungs so that, that, I, can, that I can last and stand. And one of my favorite things was, was hearing him pray. Somewhere always in Deacon's Willie prayer, he would say, when I think of God's goodness and all that he's done for me, he says, he would say, my soul cries out, hallelujah. I think all of us, if we take a moment and think about the goodness and all that God has done for you, the simple fact is this morning that you are in a building and you get a chance to praise the living king that you have lungs and air in your breath, that you were able to come in this building, that you were able to be around other members of the body of Christ. The very fact that the AC is working, and I praise Jesus for that. If I ain't got nothing else to praise, I'm thankful for that. But if we just really just take a moment in our lives to just reflect and to think about all that God has done in our life, it changed our attitude. It changed our reflection. It changed how we go about our day. Because we realize that, man, this is, God is just not a jack-in-the-box where we just kind of check in and check out. That we are in a constant pursuit and relationship in all that God has done for us. And so David is basically what he's saying to himself that, hey, I'm going to praise God because I'm reflecting back on what God has done, is doing in my life. And therefore, since I am praising God and reflecting God, he is reminding himself, hey, don't forget about all the things that God has done in your life. And don't forget all the benefits as a result of having a relationship with the living God. Sometimes in life, we can be more aware of our 401k benefits than we are the benefits in our walk with Christ. That we can check on what the stock market is doing and how our 401k has responded to that, but we're not checking in on our hearts in the relationship that we have with him. And so then David goes on in verse chapter 3 as he, as he begins to walk down the different benefits and not, limit with, not limited, but the different benefits. In verse 3 he says, who forgives all your sins and heals all your diseases. David is reminding himself God has forgiven him for all his sins and iniquities. In the Hebrew, the word used for forgiveness is in Psalms 103, it comes from the root, root word that means to toss aside. It means to remove or to pardon. You may have seen a movie where there's an innocent man on death row that is about to be executed. He waits for the proof that he is not guilty, and at the last minute, right before the execution, the proof of his innocence is found, and he is pardoned. His charges have dropped. His execution is counseled. He is set free. And so what David is reminding himself that, hey, man, that, hey, God has forgiven me of my sins. God has, God does not hold that over my head, that God has set me free from my chains of sins. That David is reminding himself that, hey, man, all of my iniquity, my, my character flaws, my, my adulteries, my failures, my mistakes, my mishaps, what, what David is saying that, hey, man, I serve a God that has forgiven me and not only forgiven me, that has tossed him to the side. And that should give us all a joy that we serve a God that does not hold over our head the decisions that we make that are not honoring to him. That we serve a God that when he sees us and that we trust in Christ, that man, that what he sees, he takes the brokenness of who we are and he's constantly cleaning us up. He's constantly molding us. He's constantly building us back up. And so if we say nothing else today, the fact that God is able to forgive the brokenness of who I am and put me in right relationship with him, that alone is worthy to give God praises. Yeah. Simple as that. And so as David, we reminded that, hey, that God forgives all of our sins, 
all of our iniquities. And like David, our lives are not perfect. It's not, but it is a reminder that God has freed us from the chains of sin and the chains of guilt can no longer weigh us down because of our relationship in Jesus. I love what it says in 1 John 1, 19. It says, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and righteous to forgive us of our sins and cleanse us of all unrighteousness. And then keep it in mind, in this particular text, I believe that the word disease can refer to both physical and spiritual. When we look at the, the ministry of Jesus, Jesus was able to heal people both physically and he was able to heal people both spiritually. There are healings that we will experience on this side of life. And there's also healings that we won't experience on this side of life. God is able to heal all diseases, anxiety, fear, and doubt, but he's not obligated to. It's up to his perfect plan for our lives. But what we can recognize is, is that, that there is a perfect healing that will come because of what Jesus did on the cross for us. He will heal us spiritually and he will heal us physically as he restores us in our new body, in our relationship in Christ. Then we get down to verse 4. Who redeems your life from the pit and crowns you with love and compassion. David was remembering the countless times that God had redeemed his life from destruction. David teaches us how the, how the hand of God is guiding our life. When our desires lead us down a path of destruction, God is able to pull us from the pits of life he, he takes the brokenest places of our life and he redeems them. And that's encouraging because I could think back on my life. I could think be, back being in college. I could think back going to Texas A&M and being at a party all night, drinking all night, getting in the car, thinking it was a good idea to drive back to Dallas. And me and my buddies, frat brothers, and, you know, you know you, you, you're driving and next thing you know, you're hearing that dish, do, 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 do. And, you know, you let the next person drive and 10 minutes later, they're falling asleep. You know, I could think about, you know, the, the, the things that I found my identity in and, 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 and things that, that were ungodly and just how destructive my life was. And I'm thankful that God in his grace and his sovereignty that when I was heading down a path of destruction, God was there to redeem my life and to save my life and to take my life, the brokenness of my life, and to pull me out of that pit and redeem me back in relationship with him. And the goodness about that is, and what it's a reminder for us is this, is this, is that all of us have stories. All of us has a, a broken place in our life where God has redeemed you. All of us has a story, good, bad, and indifferent, regardless of what it is. But the beauty of that is, is that that story symbolizes that when you and God became one. When you gave your life to Christ, when Jesus became Savior of your life. And so it is important for us as believers is that, hey, that we don't hide those stories. That, man, that we share the brokenness of where God has had us. We share what God has redeemed us. We share how God has healed our life. We share how God has repaired our relationship. We share those struggles because you know why? Those struggles can be healing for others. So God redeems us. He, he takes us back. And then we get to verse 5. It says, who, satisfy, who satisfies your desires with good things so that the youth is renewed like evil. So in this verse, David credits the Lord with satisfying the believers with good things. Psalms 84.11 promises that the Lord will not withhold any good things from those who walk upright. It's important for us to remember that God, that good is something that sometimes is defined according to God's perfect wisdom, not ours. Everything God has created has a good purpose, even if we cannot fully understand things. And then it says, your youth be renewed like eagles. We are promised that your youth be renewed like eagles. Therefore, we do not lose heart. Although our outer man is decaying and dying, yet our inner man is being renewed day by day. Sickness and death may touch this body, but, it's, it, but it has no impact on the soul. We were saved. We, when we were saved, we received the inner man for we were made a new creation in Christ. We were given a new life, the resurrected life of, with our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. And so what is David reminding us? Is that even though that our bodies decay, even though this body is dying, that our inner being, 
that our soul can be renewed day in and day out. And so as believers, we should be consistently renewing and pouring back into our soul. As believers, that we should continually allowing the Spirit of God to breathe life into our minds and breathe life into our soul. That we as believers in Christ that should live a life of faith, understanding that, hey, that we understand that death welcomes us all. But when we are in Christ Jesus, that we don't fear death because we understand that we will be in the presence of with our Lord. And so what David, what David and I look at this verse, it reminds me that, man, that it is the importance of us to tap into our passion with Christ and to live out the faith. The importance of us as believers to, to not to sit on the bench because you play the game to what? To get into the game. No player likes sitting on the bench and watching the game. But what God is saying to us as believers is that it's important for us to take that faith that he has got, given us and to, to share that faith and to live out that faith. And the, I firmly believe the more that we give and the more that we share, that there was a continual joy and passion in your heart that succumbs your age and your health. My grandma, I remember she was, I think, 88 right about the time that she passed away. And she just always had a passion. And I remember asking her when I was in college to come home and see her and when she was on her deathbed and, and just hearing her sing some praises. And I'm just like, Grandma, why are you so happy? You've always been happy. What has been the source of your happiness, your joy? She says, baby, it's the joy of the Lord. It's the joy of the Lord is in my soul. She says, even though my time is not here much longer, but she says, my soul rejoices because I'm going home. Amen. And just, just a reminder that, man, even though our bodies and even though we have troubles on this side of life and even though that life can be hard and even though it can be despairing, that your soul can be renewed. Even though that, even though, hey, man, I wish we can all be young. I turned 50 later on this year and I'm like, man, how in the world did that happen? You know, like when, when did that happen? You know what I mean? Like, I used to have this six-inch high top fade, and I'm just like, I can't grow hair no more. And then my kids are always like, like, Daddy, and all my kids got curly hair, and my girls got long curly hair, and my wife got curly hair. And it's like, well, Daddy, why you don't have any hair? Like, Daddy can't grow hair no more. Can we, can we lay hands on you and pray for you, Daddy? Jesus, can you please give Daddy hair again? And I'm just like, well, baby, I don't know if that's going to work. Well, you said Jesus can do miracles, can't you? I'm like... Man, y'all kids be asking too, too many tough questions. <laughs> but it is the reminder to live a life that God, as he pours his spirit in us, that he will renew us, our soul, and he will, we will have a spiritual joy and youthfulness because the spirit of God doesn't age. The spirit of God doesn't get tired. The spirit of God consistently grows us and matures us into the likeness of Christ. And so what do I want you to walk away with today? Is number one, I want you to walk away with this. Spend time reflecting on God's goodness in your life. Take time to reflect all the things, good things that God has done in your life. Because oftentimes, we at all have experienced trauma. We've experienced disappointment. We've experienced hardship. And those things are real and elegant in our lives, and we shouldn't neglect that. But don't allow those things to take away the goodness of what God has done in your life. Focus on the goodness of what God has done, and not only just reflect, but reflect often. Take time to, to journal. That's probably one of my favorite things to do. There's times that I'll look back at some of my journals 20 years away, and I can still feel that pain of that moment. But then I can look at the current reality, and I'm reminded because I can look back at that pain that God got me through. And so what is a reminder to me that whatever I face in life, he did it before. Guess what? He's going to do it again. And so take time to reflect and reflect often. Hey, share the goodness, the benefits of your relationship with Christ. What God has done in your life, we know where we were at. If we were in Christ, we know what our life looked like before Christ. Share your story. That is the greatest testimony and greatest witness of what God has done in you. Because what people want to know is that, hey, that big God and all those things are great, but what has God done for you? How has he changed your life? Your witness and testimony is one of the greatest opportunities to win people to God's kingdom. 
Praise. There's something about praise. I wish I could sing. If I could sing, I would never shut up. I would be singing. I would be singing my tail off. But I can praise. I'm going to praise God in the morning. My wife get mad at me because I'm an early bird, so I'm up in the morning. I'm going to have my gospel music on. I'm going to be praising God. She's mad at me. Kids mad at me. And they're like, man, what are you doing? I said, I am ushering the Spirit of God up in this house because I know once y'all get up, it's going to be all hell in here. So I'm, I'm, just trying to get, I'm, just, I'm just trying to get ahead of the game. But there's something about praise that aligns our heart and mind with the one who is worthy to be praised. And I know y'all know how to praise, because I've seen some of y'all down there at First Baptist, Amy G. Carter Stadium at TCU on Saturdays for the football games. The football games, I've seen some of y'all down there. And you know, we have communion in the parking lot before we go inside the stadium. And that communion, you know, kind of gets us into a happy spirit. And man, I've seen some of the energy uh, I know the Bible says it speaks to each other in psalms and hymns, and some of those ain't, I haven't found those songs and hymns that y'all have be speaking to the opposite team or to the refs. But you see that passion. But think about the passion of what Jesus has done for you. Think about how God has redeemed our lives back to him. Think about how God has restored our soul. And think about how where your life would be without Christ. If there is anything that deserves a praise, it is Jesus and Jesus alone. A season is temporarily, a, a championship is temporarily, a run, whatever it may be. But man, our, our eternal relationship with Jesus is forever. And it deserves all of our praises. Know your benefit manual. Know the Word of God. We can't walk in those benefits if we don't know the benefits. If we don't know the characteristics of God, how are we going to know the benefits of what he can and what he will do in your life? I remember a couple years ago, my wife, um, she got into a car wreck, uh, not a car wreck, the car caught on fire. She was working at the medical school at that time, and she was on her way to work. And she called me, and she says, uh, baby, the car is on fire. I said, what are you doing? She said, I'm sitting in the car. I'm like, why are you sitting in the car? And then I said, have you called 911? She said, no. Why are you on the phone with me? Call 911. And so I gathered the kids, and, you know, she called 911. The fire department comes, and they come and put out the fire and all that good stuff. And we get her off. And I remember that night, I mean, later on that day, the kids were, they were looking at me and said, Daddy, you don't seem upset. And she was, they were like, I said, I'm not upset. I said, I'm happy mom's good. I'm happy mom's okay. Uh, no one got hurt. But I said, it's covered. And she says, what do you mean it's covered? Well, I said, it's covered. And so would daddy help you? So would daddy has a benefit with a company called Formas? And she says, well, what do you mean? And I said, well, I'm about to make a call. And so I called and explained the situation. They were like, well, Mr. Franks, well, we're thankful that your wife is okay. And we want to let you know that you're covered, that, that everything that happened in this moment, we're going to take care of it. That, hey, we're going to come get the car, and then we're going to come, uh, you know, write the car off as total. And then here in a couple of weeks, we'll send you a check. And the check is probably going to be worth more than what the car was valued, but you are covered. And, and, and I explained that to my kids and said, because we are covered and because we have a relationship with formers, there's benefits that they take care of us in situations that happens in our lives. But think about the benefits and how we're covered in our relationship with Christ Jesus. Think about all that God does because of the relationship that we have in him. Think about the strength that we have that we have because of Christ. Think about the hope that we have that we have in Christ. Think about when we feel down and out that he's there. Think about when we feel weak that he's there to give us strength. Think about when we, when we feel fatigued and we're weary that he's there to restore our soul. Think about when we feel like we feel hopeless that God is there to pour his hope in us. God is, there's no endless amount of benefits in what we have in our relationship with Christ. And the charge to us is this, live it out in such a way in that relationship that we have with Jesus, that we're walking in confidence in the benefits that God has for us. Doxology, let's live in such a way that when people see our lives, they see a reflection of the living God. Let's live our lives in such a way as King David, let's be reminded of the goodness of what God has done in our lives. Let's praise him for the goodness. Let's reflect on his goodness. Let's not forget the goodness. Because being a follower 
of Christ and our relationship with God, there's benefits that God desires to pour in us on, a, on us day in and day out. Let's pray. But Father, I am thankful for the benefits that we have in our relationship with Christ. I'm thankful for your, your love and grace that you pour in, your compassion that you pour on us day in and day out. I'm thankful for the hope that when we feel hopeless, that you are there with us. I'm thankful for when we feel alone, that God, that your presence is always near. And so, Father, we glorify you today. We thank you today because you are a good God and you are a merciful God. And Lord, if there is someone here today that haven't signed the ultimate benefit of giving their life to Christ, I pray that your goodness would meet them right there and they would just in the quietness of their heart to say, Lord, here I am. Come into my life as my Lord and Savior that I may enjoy the benefits of the living God. Jesus, we love you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hey, thanks for watching. If something you heard resonated with you today, we would love to connect with you. Visit doxology.church slash connect or leave a comment below. And if you enjoyed today's message and you want to see more, make sure you give this video a like and subscribe to our channel so you don't miss any new videos.